Hey guys, I'm Mike Long for TravelCoastRegionNow.com. Now they're in the line of expat uh, interviews. We've talked to Jillian before. You should catch those, especially if you're going to have a baby down here. She had a baby down here. That's video number two. If you want to know who Jillian is, how she got to this point, that's video number one. But recap, Jillian's been here three years. In three years, she got pregnant, had a kid, um, has a Chico boyfriend, husband, started a business, all in three years. But Bought this, property. Bought property, but this is a video specifically about her starting her business. So we are in Nueva Arenal, which is about an hour away from La Fortuna around the lake. Her boyfriend slash husband is an excellent chef and has been in the restaurant business prior. And they started this place called... Casa Paniagua. Now Casa this was all during while you were pregnant. Yes, <laughs> this is all while I was pregnant. So we started in Fortuna doing home hosted meals in our backyard for larger groups that wanted to meet, you know, Tico families, or in our case, you know, Tico, us together as two different nationalities and what that means. Well, I, w I want to make it clear though, if they didn't see the other videos, Jillian's not, wasn't a resident when you started this. No, I came down So here. she was not a resident when she started this business particularly, so um, kind of good to know. It's easier to start a business down here than it is to, to work down here. Yes. That's your only option if you're if you don't have residency, is a work to permit's own your, almost impossible. It's, yeah, you cannot. Anyway, you're moving because you lived in La Fortuna first. You came in the waiver here and all. You're pregnant. You just started basically a relationship maybe a year and a half prior, and it's like now you want to make a life down here. And you started this. Yeah, we started Casa Paniagua, and the idea was at first, you know, to be able to work and live in the same place, so we could be with our son and save money on overhead really because if you have a rent for your home and then your business it's really kind of sucks everything you've got. Now this was something prior right? You bought, you, are you renting or did we're you buy this? We're renting this building. Because of the property in Fortuna, yeah we're property there, before we bought here we decided let's go ahead and rent and just see how this is going to go. Um, we ended up putting a lot more of our own money you into did. remodeling than I anticipated. You did all this? Yes, anything that's orange, anything that's metal was not here. <laughs> now, now could that be a problem? Could, could, so, could somebody go, hey, get out? Um, Did you sign a contract? Yes, of course. We have a lease and it's I, from, you know, from what I understand, because it's only what I understand at this point, uh, renters have a lot of rights. Yes, they do here. That is true. So we feel pretty comfortable. It's a common practice down here. We do have the option to buy at some point, and that might be something in the future, but we're still, you know, making sure that this is right for us as well. It's been you, one year now. Do you feel like you put too much money into it? Yes. Well, it is what it we, is. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> I mean, my, my experience and history so far with any building that I've lived in, besides the very first one, which we talked about, which was $600 a month, because it was pretty much perfect. The next one I moved into was a Tico house. I probably put five thousand dollars or more into that house, fixing it up to be livable. Moving, a rental house. A rental house, yes. And then here, moving here, we we saw, we knew what we were getting into. We just thought maybe this would be a breakfast place or a little soda. And then we realized that there was really a need in the community. People were asking for organic and fresh and. Uh, you know, more than just gallo pinto and the normal stuff now. I mean, we have turkey, brie, cranberry sandwiches on the menu that you're not going to get anywhere else in Costa Rica. Um, I've I import had that cheese. sandwich is fabulous. <laughs> yes. We, you know, go, we do things a little bit differently. Arturo likes to call it fusion. We do yuca, but fry it in coconut oil, which is different. It's amazing. We do a burrito, but, you know, a regular burrito would just have beans and rice. We do gallo pinto with plantains. So. Nice. You know, it's Costa Rican, but it's a little bit from everywhere. So how hard was it to get this thing started? Because I, obviously you had to jump through hoops. Yes, well, we moved here April. I had Jake in May, and in June we actually opened the doors. So, so, so walk them through the process of actually, okay, you signed the lease. You're, you're starting to, you know, redo it now. Starting to redo it, and now we have to head off to Tileron, which is in this, because Fortuna is a different uh, province. Right. Yes. So I lived and did everything over there. So when we moved here, it was completely new. Um, so getting to know a new town where all the government buildings were was interesting. Um, you have to get a health certificate. You have to get um, a business license. You have to, if you have an employee, you have to pay their health insurance every month. And you also have to pay accident insurance. So we had to do all of those things. So anyway, so you have to jump through some hoops. Yes. Now, so it's doable, but it's just 
client could sue you. Yes. Do, do you need a lawyer to do it, or can you do it yourself? We did not do that process through a lawyer. It was just Arturo and I pretty much going every day to get the right permissions. Now, just so, in, if you didn't see other videos, so she's with a, a Tico guy that lives here, obviously you speak Spanish, which is yeah, cause I obviously do not helpful. Speak, yes. So everything's doable, just uh, time consuming. Yes. Everything is doable to time did you, what did, did you run into any problems that you weren't expecting when you did The first year, no. But renewing this past year, because now we've been open in business for a year, when I went to go renew my licenses this year, because I'm delayed in the residency process, I had already applied for residency when we did this. No, I'm sorry, you're right, we hadn't. I was just about to at the same time. So I went back this year and she says, do you have your, your um, carnet card? And I say, that's just your ID card. Your sigil. Yeah, your sigil. And I said, no, not yet. I'm in the process. I pull out the piece of paper that shows that I can be here and the whole thing. And she goes, nope, not good enough. Wait, it has a number on it, doesn't yeah? it? Yeah, no, not the right number. It's a DMEX number is what they're looking for. And that's not issued until you have residency, I guess. So the, from I hope I, you guys are following this. This is just, let's just call this red tape issues with yes. gringos. Yes, yes. So I, what I had ended up having to do to get my health certificate approved was change my corporation to put a Costa Rican in the corporation. Which is fairly common and normal yes. here. Because almost everyone tells you to do that. Now it's hard to find. You, you got lucky you married you know you're with somebody, but other people like like maybe me, I'd have to almost trust a friend. And it's still a risk. I mean money is money is money. I love Arturo and we're that's great. But I have a business partner, so therefore money is money. So when that happened it was a little scary. Um, and Technically, seriously, let's say you split up today, what would happen? I don't really know right now. I mean, this is all, this this just happened. My, well, I, actually, my, women have a lot of rights. Really, so. They do, but I don't think, from what I understand, common law marriage is after three years. We haven't been there yet. And um, because my business partner is still there, it's fine. My corporation's fine. And we're, re, we're fixing it. We're, it's going to be back to normal. Right. But I had to pay the $150 to change the corporation, you know, the, the, the managers in the corporation, just to be able to go get the health certificate. So give and a month's worth of time. Can you give like a, you don't have to be too specific, but can you give a ballpark um, money thing to just kind of, to get this kind of up and going legally? Not so much, not what you did to renovate, that's off of another issue, but just the legalities of things and getting. The actual permits and things are not expensive. I think the health permit was $50. I think the business license is 200 for the year. Then you pay garbage. Um, the things that are expensive are your, the CAHA, the insurance that you have to place on your employees. I pay 113,000 colonies, which is over $200 a month. Um, once a year, you have to pay for the insurance, the INS insurance, which is the national insurance of Costa Rica. You can get car insurance, you get any insurance through them, above and beyond CAHA. So what made you, okay, you're kind of, this isn't a, totally tourist town, but a lot of tourists go through here and stuff. There's quite a few of, maybe not this exact place, but places to eat. What, what made you think you could, you know, you can make it down here in kind of a smaller town? What are you doing different? What do you do that's not the... Well, this is the major route. You have to come down this road. This is Highway 142 to get from Liberia or the, or the uh, beaches to La Fortuna, as well as from La Fortuna to get to Monteverde, you have to come around. So everybody passes by here. Right. Um, this is an expat town. I would say this is as far east as you'll find any organized communities. I found in Fortuna it was a little bit more unorganized. I met you guys, but it was just totally a few yeah. of us. <laughs> here they actually have gated communities and activities that everybody does together. And so that was kind of the idea was the passerbys. There's also a lot of houses in this area on Airbnb and things like that. If anybody, a family that needs more than one hotel room, they start looking for houses. Yeah, but don't you think a gringo brings a little different perspective to a restaurant? Because a lot of yeah. Ticos don't always, some get it, but most actually don't get it. It's the same restaurant. Same thing over and this, over. This, this, this. Correct. You know, almost like a field of dreams. If we build it, they will come. Right. You guys we, obviously, I mean, just look at this place, I can tell it's different. different. I mean, again, you are competing. There's other places in this town to eat, you know. I'm just saying, you know, it's Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, there's a tourist stop in this town. There's a major one that's in every single book, you know. What so, would, what would, uh, right down the street. would you give anybody uh, thinking about doing the same thing some sort of uh, advice? Would you say not, do you think a restaurant's a good business? Do you think if they do something completely different, they could, they could make it? Or Yeah, I mean, when we started, we wanted to just do something small. I think we were, our intention was to be open for breakfast and lunch. And it just kept growing. 
And on top of it growing, wh you know, what we found was is that, like you said, there's a lot of things that are the same. People wanted fresher groceries. Fresher and groceries. And organic got bigger too. Organic. But honestly, for me, organic was a way to get better quality items. Because you go to the grocery store, you know how lettuce is. It's questionable on a good day. <laughs> So we, if we wanted to have salads, which I really did because a lot of people like that, I didn't want to have just some hard lettuce. You know, what's the point of just putting something you're not proud of on the plate? So I called my friends up in Fortuna who were starting a business and offering organic delivery, vegetable delivery service. And sorry. Uh, well, we still have to work, right? So. Do you have any, any advice to anybody think, thinking about doing the same thing or some? Start small. Would you do anything different? Start you smaller do? than you think you want to, because it grows quicker than you think. Um, stay calm. Push <laughs> seriously. I mean, if anything that's going to happen that could go wrong will go wrong, and just keep going one day at a time. I mean, that's the whole thing. Anywhere pursuing a dream, it's just. And lots of patience. Lots of patience, yeah. <laughs> lots and lots of patience. Costa Rica's patience. past patience. Yeah, you're patient. You have to be at a whole other Zen level. <laughs> yeah, and there's days that we're not. And, you know, we get through those too. But I just think about living back in the Silicon Valley and thinking about sitting in my car for two hours each direction and, you know, complaining about that. So it's kind of like, I get to, like I said, I'm looking at this view all day, this weather. It's a much more relaxed lifestyle. So. In certain aspects, right? When and you're, you're not a, being patient. And you're with a fabulous guy that can cook. Yes, <laughs> that was plus. definitely. And he loves it. And that's why I think the food is so good. You know, it's a passion of his. I mean, we, he comes out and he shows, he'll crack open a yuca and show everybody how it's peeled and how it's cooked. You know, it's not just about here, he. He's definitely a social butterfly. <laughs> he is. Yeah, he enjoys meeting people. Okay, Although guys. he was too shy to be on camera. This is true. <laughs> yeah, hey, if we didn't answer something, um, put it in the comments. We'll, we'll, I think we can get yeah, back to him, right? You can check the video every now and then. I'll send you a, something if somebody wants to write yeah. because they always have questions. Mm -hmm. Anyway, guys, thank you, Julie. No problem. My pleasure. Over help, guys. Hey, I'm Mike Lund, TravelCoastRiganow.com. Peace, guys. Over helps.